Hello, everyone. I am happy to welcome each and every one of you to today's MEND webinar, where we will be discussing how to automate patient payments before and after the visit. My name is Brooke. I am a junior marketing coordinator here at MEND. Today, I have the privilege of joining Matt McBride, CEO at MEND. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome, Brooke. Thanks for asking and uh, really excited to talk about payments today. All right, here we go. The agenda is rather simple today, but it is packed with opportunities to get paid faster with full automation. Matt is going to take us through the process of automating payments and what the patient experience looks like. Finally, we'll round out today's webinar with a Q&A session. Starting now, you can use that Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar, and we will get to as many questions as we can at the end. Let's jump right in. Let's kick off our agenda with patient workflows before the visit happens. Matt, before we jump into payments, I know you wanted to address no-shows for the audience today. The U.S. national average no-show rate is 23%. Specialties such as behavioral health average as high as 37%. Matt, how is MEND innovating to address this issue? Yeah, this is, I think, one of the number one issues that we see uh, from prospective customers really looking for ways to engage the patient differently, provide convenience, provide frictionless experiences to uh, reduce no-shows and, and, and boost attendance, boost productivity, uh, and ultimately in, improve outcomes. Patients that are compliant uh, have better outcomes. Um, and we'll, we do have a live webinar later next month on the subject where we're going to take a much deeper dive into our patient attendance predictor, but a new solution that uh, we're beginning to provide to existing customers uh, in a beta format is our patient attendance predictor. And essentially what we've developed is uh, an AI algorithm, uh, uses a, a number of different uh, algorithms to look for different appointment outcomes like attend, cancel, no-show, et cetera, and then it makes a final prediction. Uh, some of those predictions you can see on the right-hand side of the, the screen. Um, but that's really only half the, the story. The second half of the story is that we then begin to engage with different messaging to the folks that are uh, at a higher risk of non-attendance. So where the AI is saying, you know, based on, you know, 40 or 50 different factors where the AI is saying, um, you know, this person might not attend, a series of automated uh, text messages, emails, and even phone calls, if that's, uh, if the person has a landline instead of a mobile device, a series of different uh, reminders go out to that person. And then we're looking at that data, right? Are they opening those messages? Are they clicking it? And then we're giving them just easy, frictionless opportunities to say, I'm coming or I'm not coming. Um, so what we've really developed is uh, an AI algorithm that can predict attendance. And then everything, all the outreach to, to patients is then automated. And then it's just very easy for that person to tell us if they're coming or not with uh, some slightly different messaging. So, you know, very innovative. This is something we're seeing uh, a high demand for uh, in the market and, and something that we're going to take a much deeper dive into next month. Making a prediction sounds interesting, but some of you in our audience today may be skeptical. How accurate is this and how does it work? Yeah, so, um, you know, the accuracy uh, is definitely high when we make an initial prediction. 
could be in the you know 70, 80, 90 percent range for for accuracy. And we're able to make this prediction, you know, weeks in advance of the appointment. So uh, it's not something that only happens a couple of days out. Weeks in advance, we're able to make an accurate prediction. Um, but the accuracy, if you if you really think about what we're doing here, the accuracy is really going to be driven by the patient engagement side of, of the equation here, not necessarily by the accuracy of the, the AI. Um, all the AI is going to do is really make a determination on, you know, should we send some different messaging to the person? And this particular person, we, we really want to emphasize that we get a confirm or, or a cancel or a reschedule. And then we just want to make it frictionless for them to do it. And they can, they can do it 24-7, 365. So um, similar to, to kind of what we do with telehealth and forms and, and other products in the ecosystem that we offer, when we introduce, when we just remove the friction and introduce convenience, we get much higher engagement rates. And that's really the key to this. So the accuracy isn't so, it isn't so dependent on the AI. It's not like uh, we want to automatically remove anybody in the schedule. The AI is just a, a decision point to ask and reach out to that person a little bit differently and say, are you coming or not? And then when that person tells us if they're coming or not, then we're pretty darn accurate at that point. We're probably 98, 99%, you know, maybe a, a couple of people that told us they were coming, you know, might, might slip up and forget uh, on the day of, or, or maybe something happens last minute to, to that person. But at that point, we're, you know, we're extremely accurate and extremely confident. So the uh, prediction isn't just driven by the AI. The prediction is also uh, driven and modified by the engagement that we receive from the patient. And that's really what makes this unique. It seems that all sorts of businesses are going mobile with payments. For example, the Starbucks app. Matt, what is the market research telling us about payment solutions? Yeah, right at the top of the list, consumers expect it. Um, I think when things really become ubiquitous in other uh, industries and in other aspects of our lives, that's kind of what we come to expect because we know that it's possible. So, you know, if somebody is uh, making an easy e-commerce transaction on Amazon or Uber or in a Starbucks app or, or in these other apps, they're sitting back questioning, why isn't this happening in healthcare? Why isn't this happening for uh, my medical bills? And you can see uh, from survey data that 85% of consumers say they prefer an electronic payment method for their medical bills. So I think you know consumers are are going to continue to want those same conveniences that they have in other aspects of their life. Um, and I think uh, another data point here from from GuideHouse is sixty percent of consumers expect their digital health experience to mirror that of retail. So, uh, just going back to the Starbucks amp example or or Amazon, you know, people are walking into, you know, grocery stores, other stores, and they're, they're tapping, they're swiping, they're, uh, you know, paying in, in a very uh, convenient and frictionless experience. And that's what they expect. And that's what they, they want to see from other areas uh, in their life. Um, and then I think that a, another key data point here, and we're going to have a lot more uh, data to, to share as well on, on patient payments and, and future uh, webinars and content that we put out. So definitely stay tuned to that. But we see that 96% of the phone numbers we are given are mobile numbers. So the overwhelming majority of people have some mobile device. I, I'm sure most of which are smartphone type devices. 
And so they have access to the technology. They, they want to use the technology. They've experienced it in other uh, industries where it's very easy, convenient, secure, uh, maybe even more secure. So uh, I think it's really something that customers, patients are uh, you know, wanting to see and maybe will even select their healthcare provider based on these conveniences. Matt, when I see my doctor, they often don't collect any payment, whether before or after the visit. However, sometimes I get a confusing paper bill weeks later. Matt, can you give us an overview of payment workflows before the visit? Yeah, absolutely. So um, essentially, we would bolt on a payment gateway to an existing merchant account. So this is something that really every merchant account supports. Um, it's not our gateway. It's not our merchant account or anything like that. So, uh, but it would essentially allow you to accept e-commerce transactions. Uh, from there, we would uh, look to get the copay information um, from that appointment from the PM or EHR system. And we integrate with over 81 different EHR and PM systems today. Um, in rare cases where we uh, don't have an integration in place yet, or for whatever reason, an, an integrated workflow doesn't make sense, and this is definitely less common, uh, we will have UI that allows that amount to be input when the appointment is being uh, entered into our system. But there's no, there's really no reason to do any duplicate entry in MEND. Uh, an integration is, uh, you know, easily achievable, and so we would look to to fully automate and sync those copays with the appointment. From there, and we're gonna take a look at all these different steps here in just a couple of slides. So you'll see all this. The patient would get an email uh, or, and a text. They'd click a link, put in their date of birth easy, frictionless. We'll, we'll show you what that looks like. Uh, and from there, they would be able to complete a digital check-in process uh, of which payment is a you know, key step in that, in that digital uh, check-in process, which we'll uh, show you. And then once we have a successful payment, we'll sync that back to the PM system, get it applied to the appropriate appointment so that everything uh, aligns and syncs up from an accounting perspective. And this is uh, uh, something that is for all workflows. They're all appointment types, right? All, uh, you know, whether it's in-person, whether it's virtual, this isn't just a virtual solution. Uh, we are developing a digital check-in process that can span any type of appointment for a healthcare organization. As a patient, being able to pay electronically with my phone sounds very convenient. Matt, the previous slide refers to workflow design. What are some of the options available to customers? Yeah, so there's definitely going to be some options and some flexibility. So we already touched on the uh, gateway that, that we would set up. Um, we can enable copays before uh, the appointment. We, we have some customers that um, uh, may collect everything after uh, the visit. So uh, we don't have to enable anything before the visit. So that's an option. And then we don't want to collect payment too early. We might want to you know, do something one to two days out, similar to when you check in for uh, a, a flight. Uh, you, know, you get that 24-hour check-in. So we can set the time frame of when we will allow that payment before the visit. And then we can decide, do we want that to be required or optional? Um, so again, these are just business decisions that uh, each organization can make. And, and these are some of the flexibilities that'll be uh, built in so that we can get everything dialed in. And, and of course, these things could be changed with a simple click or a click from a drop down. So if it's not right the first time, these are things that can easily be uh, adjusted as they start to roll out and go live and, and uh, we get uh, customers using it. 
Having different workflow options for customers is really what separates men from the competition. Matt, payments are really one step in a complete digital patient check-in process. I can check in digitally for an airline or a hotel. What is men doing to bring a similar experience to healthcare? Yeah, so I think this is, it, it's, it's really important to note that payments are one step in a check-in process that happens before an appointment. That appointment could be virtual, in-person, or over the phone, doesn't, doesn't matter what type of appointment it is. So it's really gonna be one step in a digital check-in process. So you can see the different types of steps that we have available um, based on the different products in our ecosystem that are being used. So for example, we could confirm the appointment. If this was virtual, we could test the connection. We could collect a payment if that was enabled. If we are using our digital forms to get any clinical questionnaires, medical histories, anything electronically uh, assigned by the patient, any, any paperwork that we would need to, to collect, um, that can be another step in the digital check-in process. And even um, you know, something on our, on our roadmap, which we'll touch on briefly a little bit later in the presentation is uh, in the near future here, we'll be collecting vitals as well through, through a webcam. So payments would just really be one step in a digital check-in process. Payments during an automated check-in process seems like a very important step for a healthcare organization. Matt, can you elaborate more on how this will work for our audience today? Yeah, absolutely. So it'd be pretty uh, simple to use whether they want to use their laptop, their mobile device, wh whatever they have access to. Um, once they go into the payment step for a digital check-in process, just similar to an airline, right? If you were going to change your seat or, or you know, check luggage, there would be a payment step in that, that process. So um, in that step, they would see you know, the amount that's owed, what, what type of uh, a, a payment is this, a co-payment, for example. Um, we can put cards on file so that they can, you know, use a card that they've used in the past just to make things even simpler and, and easier. And essentially, you can click payments and then just click make payment. And, and that's it. Just simple, easy, frictionless, um, and, uh, uh, you know, just like, you know, using the Starbucks app or some other app, um, just making it very, very easy for, for folks to uh, complete that check-in process and make that payment. Now, along the same lines too is, you know, MEND has instant technical support that's available within seconds to, to patients as well. It's a unique service offering that uh, we have. And so, we can also provide any support if somebody was having difficulty adding a, a card or, or anything along those lines, uh, we, we can uh, help assist them in uh, getting the step complete and um, uh, you know, getting that, that payment in the system and, and done prior to their uh, appointment. So um, combination of just uh, simple uh, payment as part of a digital check-in process and even a technical support available as well if the patient needs it. Matt, I know most of our customers prefer integrated workflows to avoid duplicate data entry, and MEN integrates with over 81 different EHR and PM systems. However, some organizations use MEND as the master schedule or don't have an integrated workflow yet. How can we help solve for payments for a non-integrated workflow? Yeah, so I think the way to think about this is, um, you know, maybe there's a need to get up and running right away before an integration is, is in place. Um, or maybe there's a situation where there's ad hoc appointments or some need uh, to just get something in the MEND system uh, very quickly. And so you can see it's very easy to get an appointment in. And then we will also have the ability to enter that amount uh, that is due and what type of 
payment that is, is, is it a co-payment, uh, existing balance, so on and so forth. So um, we won't spend a lot of time here. I don't think this is, is something that is advantageous to a lot of organizations, but uh, if you were uh, manually uh, entering in appointments for, for some need, a, a backup option, what, what have you, there's also the ability to, to put that amount in so you can make sure that you get that, get that payment as well. Matt, a few slides ago, we showed a complete digital check-in process with a confirmation, forms, payments, vitals, and more. Will you take us through some of these other features, starting with appointment confirmations? Yeah, so one of the, the key options here and um, something that uh, is, a, is a great way to start with patient self-scheduling for example, is, is, you know, maybe you're not ready to offer patients the ability to schedule a, a, a totally new appointment, which uh, we do have a very robust solutions for that that make it very easy, that can handle all of your business rules and, and decision trees. So, um, you know, patient self-scheduling, I think, is something that the patients are also looking for. But uh, during um, the confirmation step. And as part of our digital check-in process, we can also offer the ability for somebody to uh, cancel, reschedule, or, or confirm. And so uh, it could simply be a confirmation step. If you uh, don't want to have a, a, a reschedule option or, or a cancel option, it could just be a reschedule option. So there's a lot of uh, uh, options here. But at the end of the day, I think you want to make it easy for the person to confirm or make a change. Allow them to do it on their smartphone. They're probably, you know, on, you know, texting or using Facebook or, or TikTok or, or something on there. And so uh, also having the ability for somebody on their smartphone to just confirm, reschedule or cancel an appointment, I think is ultimately going to lead to higher patient satisfaction rates and also higher pr productivity for the organization. So um, uh, this confirmed step is also uh, a key step to, all, to allow people to make modifications if they need to. On average, customers of Men Digital Forms get the majority of forms back very fast, and we've averaged an 86% completion rate overall. Matt, can you take us through the Mend Digital Forms experience? Yeah, so another key step in the digital check-in process would be completing forms. And you can uh, see the video example uh, here on the right. Um, and I think this is, uh, again, validation of just creating convenient, frictionless experiences. And we average an 86% completion rate. Almost 70% of our digital forms come back within an hour. Um, so imagine having a frictionless payment experience before or after the visit. We'll talk about the after the visit soon. But essentially, um, we send a text, an email. The patient puts in a link or clicks the link, puts in their date of birth, and now they're completing all their paperwork, all their medical histories, all of their uh, clinical assessments, income verification forms, could be treatment plans, anything that you're doing on paper, or maybe you have a PDF buried somewhere on your website, anything that you're doing uh, uh, today that you need to collect from the, the patient, our digital forms can do it effortlessly uh, through text and email. And I think, you know, one of the interesting things about digital forms too, is that, you know, when we get the digital forms in advance of an appointment, you know that person is coming in. I mean, they're already starting to invest time. They're already in, engaging in that, in that care. Um, and so uh, digital forms is not only a great way to collect the information and provide a better uh, patient experience that increases patient satisfaction, but it's, it's also a strong indicator that they're coming in to the uh, appointment. And just another advantage that, that MEND has with, it, with its AI to predict patient attendance. And then finally, this can all be integrated back into the EHR practice management system. 
Uh, a lot of the data could potentially be moved discreetly or can be put automatically into the chart, just saving staff that time and effort having to deal with, with paperwork and then uh, punch it into to the system. So uh, tons of benefits. And, and again, digital forms would be uh, another key part of the, the digital check-in process along with, with payments and, and everything else that we're going to discuss today. Okay, so Matt, every time I see this demo, it blows me away and I get very excited about the future of healthcare. Please explain what this is and how it works. Yeah, so um, in the not too distant future, uh, we will be able to collect vitals through a webcam. Um, and there's all sorts of different vitals that you see on screen here from heart rate, blood pressure, et cetera. The, there will be others. Um, and so as part of the digital check-in process, whether it's an in-person appointment, virtual appointment, phone, what have you, we'll be able to collect vitals through something that is ubiquitous, a web camera, a camera that's on almost every laptop now, on uh, uh, almost every electronic device from TVs, our smartphones, uh, et cetera. So something that, that you know, almost everybody has pretty readily available with 30 to, to 60 seconds of video capture, we'll also be able to uh, collect vital signs as well and will become a key part of the digital check-in process. So if you really think about everything that's happening today manually in your organization, maybe appointment confirmations, reschedules, cancellations, the paperwork that's being done, payments that are being done manually, vitals being done manually, any medical histories, prescriptions, allergies, all of these things that are really being done manually that are taking a lot of uh, staff time to do, which staff is becoming harder and harder to find for a lot of healthcare organizations. So if you really think about all these steps to prepare somebody uh, to be seen by a clinician, these things are all going to be part of a, a digital check-in process, just like everything that you do before uh, you uh, check in for your airline, right? Whether you're picking your seat, whether you're making a change, whether you're adding luggage, so on and so forth, all of these things are going to be able to happen in a more automated fashion and in an experience that patients are really demanding, that consumers are expecting and are likely to choose their healthcare organization uh, based on uh, having this type of access. The future is looking amazing and technology is going to play a very important role. Before we move on, we did want to ask our audience a quick question. How do you handle patient payments today? Now you should be able to see our question. So how do you handle patient payments today? Some could be paper bills, patient portal, app, text message or others that may apply. I will give everyone about another minute to answer. And once everyone is done answering the question, I will share the results with you and then we will move on to finish today's presentation. I think you can, you can pick more than one if you, if you have uh, a couple of these things going on. I, I think you can uh, select all that you have available today. So it looks like more than half of you say paper bills, about 71%, and then 29% patient portal, and then 14% app. Thank you guys for answering that question for us today. So far we've covered patient, so, so far we've covered payments and digital check-in before the visit, Let's go ahead and move on to automated payments after the visit. I mentioned earlier that I sometimes get a paper bill from my doctor weeks after the appointment. How is MEND turning paper bills into a frictionless digital experience for patients? 
Yeah, so I think this is where we can have the most impact in terms of speed, collection rates, patient satisfaction, and giving them uh, an experience uh, after the appointment that is uh, easier, electronic, and you know, really how they they want to pay. Um, so you know, co collecting copayments are, are great, and you know, before you let the person in to the uh, exam room, you could you know swipe the card. There's there there are other ways to get payments, but once they leave, and any amounts owed that can become a lot more difficult to collect, especially if it's not convenient, if it's not easy, if it's not uh, understandable, maybe the paper bill comes a couple weeks after the, the fact and uh, it's, it's unexpected, you've forgotten about it. This is now an unexpected expense that you haven't thought about in your, in your budget. The bill is confusing. Um, you're, you're wondering why it's not being done electronically. All these different things can uh, can go through a person's uh, mind. And so I think just being able to, uh, the way our system works is as soon as that patient balance, that patient responsibility is known after a visit, we can send a digital form that can collect the payment, which we're going to show here uh, in a little bit. We can collect that payment. There's a series of reminders built in when we collect the payment, we write that back to the practice management system and apply it to the correct appointment. Or if we are unable to collect the appointment, we can notify staff so that they're aware that the payment uh, has not been collected. So this is really about, uh, part of it is really about speed, right? A lot of the claims are being submitted and, and uh, exchanged electronically. Uh, information comes back from the insurance company or, or, or uh, uh, you know, a patient balance is, is known now. That form can be immediately dispatched. We see extremely high engagement rates with our forms. Payment can be made even with a card on file. Once that payment is made, it can be automatically written back. No need to fold bills, stuff envelopes, send them out get checks back, uh, a, a lot of that manual effort, almost all of that manual effort can really be eliminated, automated. And we're talking about now uh, faster payments from patients and reduced manual labor from staff. So just really a win all the way around and you know, ultimately a better patient satisfaction and, and better patient experience as well. It would be so cool to have an Amazon-like payment experience after visiting the doctor. Matt, can you show us what the form's experience looks like when making a payment? Absolutely. So uh, in our form's experience, you get a link, you put in your date of birth, and you can see we can attach any documents, explanation of benefits, or, or anything we want. We put the amount. We can allow the person to uh, put their payment information on file and they can access that and use that, uh, uh, you know, in, in future transactions. Or most of us have autofill for our payments on our devices, right? So the information can pretty much be automatically filled out and they can click and, and submit that payment 24-7, 365 in an automated, effortless uh, experience. So I think the more friction you take out of the process, the higher the satisfaction, um, the more uh, uh, less staff that, that's used, the higher the collection rate, the higher the speed to get paid. Um, and so this is something that uh, we have available now. This is something that when we were uh, talking roadmap with customers last year, that almost all of our customers were interested in patient payment solutions. And just even looking at the survey results from this event with over 70% still relying on uh, some form of paper, 
Um, and even to get the paper and go to a different portal, it's still, there's, there's lots of different steps. There's uh, additional time that's elapsing. So um, uh, this is something that's available now that we're just seeing incredible demand from our current customer base and new customers, something that's available now that uh, we can start to uh, automate payments uh, and create an entirely new experience for people after the uh, appointment and what you've just seen on screen today. Our audience may or may not know that MENS is a complete patient engagement platform for in-person, virtual, or any type of visit. Matt, can you explain this further for our audience today? Yeah, so really MEND is a complete patient engagement strategy for an organization, right? All of the touch points before, during, after. So whether we're talking about patient self-scheduling, digital check-ins, the forms, the payments, we've got vitals coming. Uh, we have a, appointment reminders that can change based on uh, AI, attendance prediction. We have telehealth if we're helping to facilitate the visit. And we have very robust telehealth uh, workflows. Um, we have messaging uh, capabilities, secure two-way messaging, bulk notifications. We have an entire ecosystem to really facilitate all of the key touch points um, uh, with a patient before, during, or after the visit. So really with one partner, one integration, one experience, there's an entire ecosystem and there really isn't a workflow or a specialty that we haven't helped uh, today. So I think there's tremendous opportunities to create these experiences, create efficiencies um, to uh, you know, reduce the need for manual labor um, and uh, also just provide a, an overall better experience for, for patients and staff. And uh, uh, so, yeah, MEND is a, a complete uh, ecosystem and um, uh, something that can be used across any type of appointment that you have. So virtual, in-person, phone, any type of appointment. Incredible content today. Matt, can you summarize MEND's vision for digital health and patient engagement? Yeah, so we covered this in a recent webinar, but we want to kind of quickly take you through the vision here that we have and that we're working towards where essentially payments can, uh, patients can self-schedule before an appointment. We've got appointment reminders that are really driven by AI. Uh, we have digital forms that can be completed digitally um, and synced up. Uh, an entire digital check-in process so that patients can check themselves in fully where we will have payments. So co-pays can be collected before the appointment. Um, we have AI that will be even be able to identify who might struggle to connect in telehealth that we're working on. The AI uh, webcam vitals that uh, everybody saw. Um, we have better weight room experiences for telehealth visits. So we have educational content um, finally, uh, 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 you know, uh, moving to during the visit, uh, any sort of language barriers, we're working towards removing those with automatic uh, captioning, uh, translations, uh, to even creating partnerships where uh, documentation can be done automatically for the clinicians during the visit. Um, payments will also be uh, collected after the visit as well, not just before, and uh, really working towards a, a vision where patients and providers can just simply get back to care, right? Can, can the, the clinicians can just focus on that patient, focus on providing the care, and a lot of these other manual tasks, these manual burdens, administrative burdens, can be done electronically and happen automatically and be integrated and really just allow organizations and, and uh, uh, folks to focus on care, focus on getting healthy and staying healthy. If you are looking for more informative content, we keep a library in the resource section of the MEND website. 
In March, Matt authored a webinar and ebook titled 12 Telemedicine and Digital Health Engagement KPIs Every Executive Should Know. Not only do we identify important KPIs, but we share our data to use as a benchmark. Simply navigate to men.com, click on resources, and you can access all of our on demand content. On July 27th, Matt and I will be hosting another live webinar on our new patient attendance predictor. Simply navigate to men.com, click on resources, and there you can access all of our live events in the webinars section. And with that, Matt, let's go ahead and jump into the questions. And for a reminder to our audience, Zoom has that Q&A option in the toolbar, which will make it easier for us to answer your questions. Let's see here, Matt. Um, question regarding to the vital that we showed earlier in our presentation. Heather would like to know, will the upcoming vital sign collection be able to be done with a cell phone? She said she has... Um, a lot of appointments that do not, or patients, sorry, patients that do not use a computer, but use their phones for services. Yes, Heather, great, great question. Any, any device. So uh, it could be a smartphone, mobile device, um, uh, something that has a camera. And I mean, most smart, a lot of smartphones now have multiple cameras. There's one on the front, there's one on the back. They'll probably be putting them on the side soon. Um, so yes. Uh, whether you're using a desktop and you have more of an external camera, um, the demo that you saw, um, I'm using, I'm not using a fancy camera at all. Uh, it's a, uh, um, uh, I think a 720p, which is a couple, you know, they, they have 1080p and 4k. So I'm my, my camera that I showed that demo on, uh, is not a special camera at all. Um, so whether it's at the desktop or it's built into the laptop uh, and straight above the screen, a tablet, a, a smartphone device, um, any, any uh, camera that is on that device would be able to be used to capture the web vitals. And then Kelly has a question. When will the vitals be available and what extra costs does it have? Yeah, so right now we have it on uh, the roadmap slated more towards the end of this year, uh, beginning of next. Um, and there, there will be a cost. Uh, there will be a, a cost from our perspective to get those vitals, to you know, send the vitals uh, into, the, into the cloud, into the machine learning algorithms um, that will eventually be FDA approved as well. So um, they're likely to launch, uh, as, you know, for educational purposes only, but they're still going to be, uh, uh accurate and, and accurate enough to maybe pinpoint if, if somebody needs to, um, uh, you know, go to the emergency room or urgent care, or come in or, or so on and so forth. Um, so they, uh, eventually they will be FDA approved. So, um, yes, there is a cost to, uh, get the vitals and get the information, um, but certainly uh, would not cost uh, nearly as much as uh, having folks that manually, you know, having manual labor that, that collects the, the vitals or, you know, maybe you don't have any vitals at all if it's a, if it's a virtual visit. So having something um, to uh, aid in the, the clinical process would, would definitely be beneficial. So there, there will be some cost, but um, not anything astronomical. Chuck is asking, is everything shown today for virtual visits? What about in-person visits? Yeah, so everything that, that MEND offers from patient self-scheduling, forms, digital check-in, payments, appointment reminders, our AI, the web vitals, uh, everything uh, with the exception of telehealth, Telehealth could, you know, it's only virtual, but everything else in the ecosystem can be used for any type of appointment. So we've got in-person appointments, phone appointments, appointments where social workers are going out to schools or homes or, or, or what have you 
So, uh, you know, new patient appointments, uh, established, uh, really any appointment type, of course, virtual telehealth is something we're very strong uh, in. So, uh, yet yeah, all of these tools, the, the payments, everything that we're discussing is uh, uh, for any appointment type. So MEND is really, you know, one-stop shopping. Sydney asks, when will automated payments be available through MEND? Yeah, so uh, automated payments after the visit is available now. It's available today. We have uh, customers onboarding with it in various stages uh, right now. So uh, automated patient payments after the visit is available now. Um, payments before the visit we do have workflows available to uh, capture a credit card, store it on file. Um, so we do have some uh, authorize and capture uh, capability with payments before the visit, but really we're architecting it in a new digital check-in experience. And so that digital check-in experience is something that's uh, slated, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, being worked on and something that uh, we'll have in Q4. So digital check-in Q4, automated payments after the appointment available today. Well, Matt, it looks like we are close to wrapping up our webinar for today. Is there anything else that you wanted to add for our audience today? No. Yeah. Thank you everybody for the awesome questions and uh, for attending and for anybody that uh, wants to uh, take a look uh, more in depth at, at, at payments and see if that might be a viable solution for you. You can just go to men.com slash demo and we'd be happy to uh, explore the, the opportunities to uh, take your patient payments to the next level. So thank you everybody for attending and We'll see everybody soon. It was a pleasure discussing this with you today, Matt. And for our audience today, we hope that you all tune in again next time.